All right, guys. So we'll just talk through it element by element. This is at the northwest corner of the property. What we're looking at right here is what we're calling the, the run on drain. This is Carrancho Road. And we're gonna, with about four or five sandbags, be able to shunt water that would otherwise run down this road and ultimately be deposited in the creek um, onto the land right here via this 5% drain. And then that drops into a little splash pool, a dissipation pool. So water will spill over this sill, drop down here into the, the bottom where it'll drop its sediment. There'll be still water that'll then take the energy out of the fast moving water and it'll transition over this lip smoothly, passively, and then into what we're calling the Northwest Vineyard Swale. So it's gonna run directly across this vineyard and then we'll catch up again on the other side. The hay bales are for top mulching, all the disturbed soil. So basically the berm, the swale bottom, and any area that the excavator tore up we have a bunch of cover crop seed for you guys that will mix a couple different mixes depending on where the seed is applied. And then on top of that, you'll scatter a good, roughly bird proof layer of straw mulch, and that'll help keep the seeds moist, protect them from wind and predation, and help them germinate and get all that soil stabilized. Cool. So we don't have to okay. chase birds away. Don't have to chase birds away. Yeah. And we spaced them about <laughs> one every 15 feet, is how many we budgeted for. So for every 15 foot of swale, about one bale should cover most of the disturbed soil okay. that you have. I'm gonna put this down because I am not, I'm not shoveling anymore. <laughs> so this is the other end of the Northwest Vineyard Swale. This is our armored sill. We've got a, a slightly deeper dig on this section just leading up to this armoring so that we get a little bit deeper water, a little bit stiller water. Stiller water is gonna drop its sediment better and that way it'll clean itself up before it discharges here across rolling dip one, which is this guy. So that'll take the water from Carrancho Road through the Northwest Vineyard Swale across your driveway and deposit it into yet another dissipation pool into the West Olive Swale. So same deal here, level sill, come down, place for the water to calm down, drop its sediment load if it has anything at this point, and then it's gonna transition over this sill and then move out really passively on contour all the way across the landscape until we cross the driveway again at what we call culvert three. Gophers have been, yeah, fast at work remodeling already, so we'll see. <laughs> they are nature's hydro engineers. <laughs> I can't wait to, you guys were talking about you guys gonna kayak doing a trellis system <laughs> where we can just the trellis all systems be over these are planted so fun. and oh we God. walk through this like Food trellis tunnels. green tunnel Yeah, that I'm excited about. <laughs> so this is the final run of the West Olive Swale heading up to our primary sill where the water is going to cross the driveway via an existing culvert system. Kylie, do you want to tell us about creating the armored sill since you were a part of that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did help with this one. It was fun. It makes me want to build a cob house. Beautiful feel, like, work of art. Confident in it. Oh, this is it finished. I didn't get to see it finished. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how they all just kind of find their home next to each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. Kylie was our, our chief sill engineer, so she set the level sill all the way across, starting with this flat rock right here. So it's level to where James is standing. Everything's keyed into some big stones. Our test is always to walk up and down them and they shouldn't move. And then we've got a really solid transition down into the existing culvert that runs across the driveway, where it will then enter East Olive Top Swale and run another 250 feet over across the landscape. So it's kind of cool. We're like creating these fun, like way cooler trails on the property to walk through. <laughs> yeah, swell <Soil> trails. <laughs> so the culvert runs underneath the driveway here, discharges into a slightly remodeled splash basin. It's already been mostly created for us by prior patterning. So there's some silt here, nice level area. We just created this berm here, armored the side, and we took the soil from this zone, knowing that in the future they'll have a ranch tractor so they can drive in here. If there is a heavy siltation event, scoop out silt, use that for gardening or, or orcharding on the farm. And from here, the water transitions down another big stone sill 
into the bottom of the east olive topsoil. And then we head, yeah, it's almost 300 feet out across the landscape around the next ridge. We had a lot of native rocks on site, which we didn't have to bring in any rock material for all the armoring because we found it and it was already here. So these were some of the boulders that Wes had to dig up when he was on the excavator in this section. Um, wow. You can tell them, Wes, but this was not very fun digging, I imagine. Wow. This is about five feet per hour. Five feet per hour. Uh, very slow. We'll cut in a, a picture of the design map here, but this is where we had to make an audible call. So this is our about 45 foot spillway okay. on the East Olive Topsoil. So this is where the water will discharge. We have, we set it at one foot higher than the bottom. So we'll have a foot deep of water hanging out in here. And then once it gets up past that, it's gonna gently transition over this and sheet down in a really broad, thin flow. Um, there was supposed to be a third swale right down here. However, you can probably see the dead excavator over yonder. Um, so the third swell didn't happen. The excavator is still stuck in it. And uh, we'll have to sort that one out. <laughs> but the system will function just fine with this one and the lower swell we had planned into it. So this is the spillway um, track rolled with the excavator. So it's good and compacted, nice shallow grade. And then uh, I don't know if we want to walk to the end, but we can just kind of let you know that this swell wraps all the way around the hill to the other side. So it's got a lot of catchment area. And then we're going to take the runoff from the rain tanks, which comes from your house roof and your driveway drain. And instead of running it down the slope where it's causing erosion currently, we can just run a pipe and dump that water into this swell. So got all that it. stuff that's eroding, the quick fix is like get some corrugated pipe, just link it up with this and that problem will at least stop getting worse. This is where water is going to discharge, cruise down. All the torn up soil will be cover cropped and seeded so you'll get a good root structure, a lot of organic material to help further slow water and trap silt. Then ultimately we end up down here at the bottom. This is the east olive bottom swale. And we end up right here, we're above the spillway. So again, it's another about 44 foot spillway. We made a little middle triangle because we didn't have time or didn't want to take out the olive tree, but um, got a nice level sill the whole way across. Again, one foot of depth, one foot of freeboard to the top of the swale. And this one, if I remember right, is 160 feet long. Um, and then from here, once it fills this trench, water will sheet over the top. And then we're going to drop into our collection drain, which is from this point, basically like a giant has two arms. Each arm is running uphill at about 2% grade. So it'll catch water, but just move it very slowly towards this center point right here. And then this is where James and I armored a sill. So any water that's running down these drains is going to get to this sill. It's got a little lip where it's going to self level and drop any sediment. And then it's going to transition over this level sill, the stone sill. Um, and drop into our final rolling dip. Again, a 6% grade crossing the roadway here. And I don't know if the camera can see it too, but this is a tips down media Luna. So it's, <laughs> go buddy, down there. That's the course of the drain right there where the ball went. Um, so this curve shape is there specifically to take water from a broader area and collect it in a narrower area. So we're channeling water and depositing it right in the drain and 6% grade cruising down. The drain is at about a 35 slash 55 degree angle, depending on which side you're standing on, to the direction of travel on this road so that it can still be taken at decent speed without getting it really hard up and down. You just get more of a rocking boat motion. So water comes down this way. Once again, our final bit of armoring, level sill, armored shoulder, Nice tight rock work the whole way down. Wow. Our final splash basin. Water can come here, drop any sediment. Last little sill, armored splash. And then it already, it goes back to basically where it was already leaving the property, but now we've run it through 1200 feet of sponge. The question was how many gallons of water in an average rain year of about 12 inches, if I remember right. Um, this system should be able to infiltrate an additional 
basically three quarters of a million to 1.5 million gallons of water, depending on the rain conditions and the soil conditions. So, and that's year after year after year, passive machine. So that's water that would otherwise have just left the, water, the property straight away, but now we've given it a chance to infiltrate the water in the ground and grow trees. Yeah, so the question was whether or not this culvert drain is gonna still be functioning um, a little bit. It will, it will still technically function, it's not blocked or anything, but the stress has been taken off the system. So the, basically the reason that this thing is down cut so much, we've taken that stress off of it by giving it a chance to infiltrate above. So the system still functions, um, but we've evened out the pressure points and increased the infiltration capacity of the whole thing. 95% of the water that used to run through these culverts, which was then being directed straight off the property, is now being kept on the property as long as possible in order to grow more biomass um, before it then exits.